In less than a week, President Trump will confront a charged agenda in a summit with Vladimir Putin. North Korea, Iran, Ukraine, Crimea, and a host of contentious bilateral issues offers little apparent ground for a common approach by Washington and Moscow. Speculation persists of a possible deal with Russia on Syria. Caution is required, for no decision by the president is more likely to affect the course of events in the Middle East in the coming years than the issue of how long to retain U.S. forces in Syria. And there can be little doubt that any deal Putin proffers will hinge on withdrawal of U.S. forces, the very forces that have been critical to destroying the violent jihadist homeland in Syria. Make no mistake, these small U.S. forces have an outside significance for both our friends and enemies. At modest cost and risk, they offer substantial benefit to U.S. national security. Carefully integrated into a larger strategy, a small, nimble U.S. force presence offers a powerful obstacle to two threats, a regenerated ISIS and Iran's effort to use Syria as a power projection platform in the heart of the Arab Middle East and against Israel. America's closest allies in the region lost faith in the Obama administration because of its perceived disengagement from the region. Yet once again, and perhaps more profoundly, the issue of U.S. commitment to its allies, and indeed to broader stability and security in the region, is being widely questioned. Why? Because of the administration's hesitancy on Syria and the widening gap between the administration's rhetoric and the reality of its Iran policy. Reimposing sanctions on Iran is easy, but will be insufficient to reverse the gains Iran has made on Middle East battlefields through the IRGC and a growing army of proxies. Indeed, there is a growing suspicion in the region that this administration does not have the stomach to see through the hard work required to put a limit to Tehran's destabilizing activities. Syria is ground zero for that effort, especially as Tehran accelerates its campaign to construct a permanent defense and intelligence architecture there. Iranian aims conflict squarely with Israel's security, and Israel has repeatedly acted militarily to try to blunt Iran's turning Syria into a platform for attacks against the Jewish state. Left unchecked, Iran's deepening involvement in Syria will ultimately provide the breeding ground for regeneration of Sunni extremism on the embers of Syria's civil war. The bellows effect of that conflict on Iraq were terrifying and fostered construction of a physical caliphate spanning two countries, waves of international terrorism, attacks within the U.S., and recruitment of foreign fighters at a pace that threatened to paralyze police and intelligence services around the world. We cannot risk a return to those days by a premature troop withdrawal. Syria's agony will not be quelled, nor its potential to destabilize neighboring Jordan and Lebanon and Europe with regime violence propelled surges of refugees in the current construct of a piece of the grave approach taken by Moscow and Tehran. The chaotic brutality of the Assad regime's effort to retake southwestern Syria, assisted by Russian air power and foreign fighters provided by Iran and Hezbollah, is a chilling reminder if one is needed. But this is not an inevitable outcome. Ironically, we have the stronger allies and the means to counter the Iranians and their proxies in order to shape a different future for Syria. As we present in a new study by the Washington Institute, we can do so by taking the following steps. Maintain a U.S. military presence sized to the task and complemented with a no-fly, no-drive zone to prevent ISIS's regeneration, to deny these areas to Iranian-backed forces supporting the weakened Assad regime, and to prevent an Iranian land bridge to the Mediterranean. Work out an understanding with Turkey in the north which would permit the U.S. to exercise control over 40 percent of Syria's territory, including the resource richest tier of the country. With our Gulf allies, target banks providing credit to the Assad regime, Iranian support to proxies in Syria, and Assad cronies who facilitate Iranian investments in Syria. And ask our Gulf partners to provide assistance to northeast Syria and to promote its economic well-being. That will require not just assistance, but also finding alternative markets for the region's oil and agricultural exports. Emphasize the need for full implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254, which offers a pathway for a political outcome in Syria. And finally, convey to Moscow that we will back Israeli strikes against Iranian Shia militias in Syria, presenting the Russians and Assad with the choice of survival of the regime 
or the continued presence in Syria of Iran, its foreign Shia proxies, and Hezbollah. Getting our strategy right on Syria is critical to our national security. It does not require a long-term large U.S. ground force. Indeed, as in Iraq, our military forces should be sized and tailored to the evolving requirements before us. But we have ground to make up, as Iran and Russia have been there before us. The ravaged landscape of Syria and the millions of refugees in limbo are their legacy and hold out the prospect of a resurrection of violent extremists. In that context, a disordered Syria dominated by Iran offers dire repercussions for the region and the U.S. homeland absent a forthright U.S. decision to play the cards we have.